I don't know if you've noticed, but retro tech is becoming really popular among the new generation, mainly because they just don't make them like they used to. I know that phrase is old, cheesy, and way overused, but what's sadder than this intro is that it's actually true. Do you really think an electronic device you purchase today will last you almost 40 years and pretty much spank most of the offerings 40 years into the future? Well, Sony did it back in 1984, and I'm going to tell you all about it. Greetings friends, thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out the video. If you dig the video and vibe with my delivery, I humbly ask you to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell just to always be notified when I'm up to no good. If you have a minute, in the description below are a couple links I put down there. One to my Hi-Fi clothing shop where I sell audio inspired clothing. Right now there's actually an exclusive limited edition 40th anniversary CD t-shirt that you should totally check out. I also have a Bandcamp link where you'll find synthwave music that I produced last year. Let's have some fun with this CD player. The Sony D5, also known as the D50, was the world's first portable compact disc player. It was the predecessor to what would become the mass market Sony Discman. So what was so special about this product, right? Almost 40 years after it debuted at only $300, which was really paltry compared to what the actual full-size CD players were going for. It is, in my opinion, still a viable option as a disc spinner you can use today as your daily driver. The more reasonable price tag gave people the opportunity to experience the new format for the first time without having to spend just like an obscene amount of money for a player. By 1985, the price actually dropped to 200 and Sony was pumping out 100,000 units every month just to meet the demand. So when this happened, of course, you know, people wanted more of their favorite music on CD. So this triggered the true beginnings of the era of the C compact disc. The D5 was a catalyst in a trend that would last for well over a decade. First, let me start by telling you how I even discovered it. I was browsing articles and videos about the Sony Discman because I, I wanted to do a video about the original ones from back in the day. Well, here I got. So I clicked on a video where the guy had like a dozen Discman laid out on a table. I thought it was cool. And the one that caught my eye was the D5. It looked cool. It was a bit bigger than the rest of them. So I, I waited until he talked about the D5 and found out the model number and all that stuff. I almost immediately started scouring the internet to find one to buy. It wasn't easy. 98% of these are available for parts only. It's broken. It was a bit unfortunate because I wanted to own a piece of compact disc history. This is a device that literally laid the groundwork for the disc man. The D5 needed to be plugged into its 9 volt power adapter to work, or if you're lucky enough to find a battery pack case for it, uh, you, you can get a few hours of battery life from it using C cell batteries. Do you even sell C cell batteries anymore? So this, in my opinion, was meant to be a small form factor CD player for the home. However, as I said, it was the foundation for what was to come. Sony realized if this was truly to be portable, they needed to make it smaller, the battery needed to last longer, and it needed some type of anti-skip technology, since the only thing providing shock absorption for the D5 were two small rubber shocks in, uh, installed inside the unit itself. After all, the point of a portable device back then was to be like the Walkman, where you could take it out with you and be free of cords and just go jogging and stuff. So long story short, I found one days later on the selling platform Macari. The person wanted 180, I offered 150, done deal. There was one in mint condition on eBay for $430, but I didn't want to spend that kind of scratch on this project just because I really didn't know you know, if it was gonna sound good. So I actually may go back and buy it if one of you hasn't swooped in on it already. So <laughs> the one I got came with the power adapter that plugs into the rear of the unit, providing an RCA output, even more solidifying my opinion that this is meant for home use and not jogging around the neighborhood. This unit features the CX20133 digital to analog converter, which was a standard in Sony's smaller audio offerings for many, many years to come. 
It wasn't easy to find out what DAC came inside this unit. However, back in the 80s, they took their owner's manuals very seriously. The owner's manual is literally shy of 50 pages and features everything you could ever want to know about this unit inside and out. It's so in depth that I could probably build one of these from scratch if I had the parts lying around. That's just how intense the manual is. I'll actually drop a link to the manual in the description below in case you need one or just want to see it for just morbid curiosity. Uh, full transparency. Now, much different than how companies do things today, which is basically just specs, warranty, and a faceless thank you for buying their product. You know, sad. The unit really looks cool, especially during an era where aesthetics for electronics was transitioning from the 70s to the 80s. This has a cool retro tech feel without looking like an, just an obsolete piece of gear forgotten in time. I had been looking for a CD player where I could see the disc spinning on the top, and I finally got it, guys. The top lid of the unit shows part of the disc in action, which I think is rad. Once you open the lid, the bottom panel is actually made of metal, and the disc just sits right on top. It doesn't click in like the plasticky ones. Uh, the front of the unit is straightforward. It controls basic functions like the power button and the play, pause, stop, skip. Simple and a, there's a small screen to show you the song number and the time information. On the right side of the D5, there's a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. One huge feature about this unit is it can get loud. It doesn't take a lot to get things really going. In my opinion, the sound quality is superior to many units I have actually tested today, which left me completely confused. How is this small, compact little player from almost 40 years ago playing like it was made yesterday for audiophile quality sound reproduction? The Discman that followed for years and years after these initial units did not sound as nice and warm and fuzzy. The bass on these is absolutely incredible. The clarity is crisp. The sound stage was fantastic. It really allowed my Tecton 210s over here to shine. I honestly listened to this unit for several hours the first day I had it. it wasn't fatiguing at all. I had plugged it into the Vincent SV200 via AudioQuest RCA cables and it worked perfectly. I feel the advantage of this unit is that it doesn't have that anti-skip feature which in an earlier model Discman had been proven to degrade the sound quality of the music when the feature was active. This is just a straight up CD player and it can actually play CDRs which is Super cool. It was hit or miss back in the day with CDRs. Overall, I think this unit is solid, guys, and I'll probably use it quite often since I liked it that much. Now, is this a player for everyone? Probably not, since most people these days like the convenience of their mobile phones and stuff like that. This is more of a ceremony. Is it cool to own a piece of hi-fi history? Heck yeah, heck yeah it is. So there's a question that still lingers in my mind. If this device sounds the way it does and is superior to you know many products of today, what happened? Well, one thing that happened is manufacturers decided to go to the lowest bidder and just pulled parts off the shelf. They stopped innovating. They got lazy and greedy, and you know they knew that many differences in quality would be inaudible to so many. They said, "The hell with it. Let's make a CD player for X amount of money that will sound." okay, good enough, and call it a day. That's what they're doing. Little do they know the resurgence is at their doorstep and there will be a demand for high quality players very soon. Now, not all new players are substandard or bad. There's a lot of new technology, new DACs and new players that can easily best the D5. However, I posed the question in the beginning, will these devices last almost 40 years? We'll find out. Well, I probably, I probably won't, I'll be on the other side. But, but so may, you guys might find out. Uh, we do, however, live in an upgrade-centric society where we have been conditioned to constantly upgrade to the next big thing. Most devices will be obsolete, improved upon, or you know, much cheaper a year or two from now. Back in the 70s and 80s, you bought a piece of gear and kept it because it was good and it did the job well. I feel this would be a back and forth discussion because there are good points from both sides of the fence. Uh, this is definitely a conversation I would you know, love to have because discussing things like this is thought provoking and can lead to amazing conclusions. However, my mindset 
and goal in this hobby are to enjoy the experience regardless of whether it's a new or vintage or whatever piece. If it's good, it's good. And I will appreciate it and enjoy it for what it is. I wanna thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this video. I really love doing these little vintage retro tech videos since I get to play with things that I kinda of missed out on as a kid since I didn't really get my my introduction into hi-fi until the late 80s and early 90s when I was only a young boy. Uh, thank you again for stopping by and I will see you guys next time. Take care.